So hey, I see you wandered into my Mulan video. Let's get to it! So our story begins with Mulan waking up from a nap, you know, as all good stories should. It turns out that Mulan woke up late because she has to take an exam to get her marriage license. And just like me in high school, instead of studying, my girl be cheating. So Mulan says goodbye to her dad, her insane dog, and some chickens, and heads out for the DMV, the Department of Marriage Validations. I'm going to pray some more. So it turns out that Milan's mom and grandmother are waiting to pretty her up for the marriage exam, except that they're not doing it at their own house for some reason. So the grandma is like, Milan's a screw up, she'll need all the help she can get. So what do you think the grandma gets Milan for luck? Is it a horseshoe or four leaf clover? No, the grandma's like, I got a bug. I'm thinking that she might be senile because in order to prove that the bug is lucky, she walks into an upcoming traffic. And she survives. Yep, this cricket's a lucky one. But luckily, at this same time, Milan pulls up so we can get back to the plot. So Milan's mom is like, hey, why are you so late? You know, why you got straw in your hair? What you been doing? Well, anyway, her mom then throws Milan into the bath and like five other people pop out to scrub her Milan down. Damn, they be taking this marriage license thing seriously. And then they dress Milan and her grandmother tries to shove a cricket up her ass. And even you can't blow it. Who let her in here? So they clean up and dress Milan, and she heads over to the DMV. And apparently she's not the only one because there are four other ladies trying to get their marriage license as well. And uh, for some reason, only one of them could get their marriage license today. So the examiner comes out and it's a thick ass woman. She calls for Milan to come out first and examines her. Then for some reason, the bug that was in Milan's ass decides to crawl out of Mulan's ass, and she tries to put it back in. Then, she tries to eat it, but has to spit it out. After that, my girl cheats on the first portion of the test and passes. Noise. Then, the examiner lady draws a mustache on herself and... Hold up. That's a whole ass man! Holy mother of Jesus! She's a man! Anyway... Mulan has to pour tea for the examiner dude, and the bug that came out of her ass decides he wants to take a bath in the tea. Then, after some more shenanigans, the examiner man sits on a pile of coals and lights his ass on fire. Then Mulan, in an act of quick thinking, throws the pot of boiling water on the examiner to put out the fire. I know Mulan doesn't study, but that's probably the worst thing she could have done in this situation. So, obviously, Mulan failed her exam and goes home to sulk. So, Mulan's dad comes up to her and says, Hey, kiddo, don't worry so much. I mean, there's always next year. At that same time, the town's drummer boy decides to beat that bass to signal that something's going on. So, it turns out that China has been invaded. We're in China, by the way, by this creepy ass dude with these weird ass eyes. Um, I don't want to be the guy to say this, but dude, what is going on with your eyes? You should have a doctor look at those because I'm pretty sure they ain't supposed to be that color. Perfect. Right. So the Huns attack the Great Wall of China. Which doesn't seem to protect jack shit because the Huns easily climb it. So the Emperor of China, who has an army, mind you, decides to get the civilians involved and issues a draft. Saying that every family needs to send one dude to fight. So the message is delivered to Milan's village 
by Tweezerface, who says that Milan's father has to go fight. Now, Milan's father can't fight because he lost a leg or got stabbed in the leg. Basically, something happened to his leg. So, Milan says, nah, and cuts her hair, puts on her father's armor to pretend to be a boy, and steals his horse. Then the grandma feels a disturbance in the force and wakes up to find Milan missing. So she wakes up the whole damn house at like 3 a.m. Because Milan went missing. I don't know who was the worst person at the, in this situation. So anyway, Milan's father is like, well, she did. So grandma calls out to the spirit world so that they would protect Milan, wherever the hell she's going. So the most ancient of the ancestors wakes up and unstones a small red dragon. So why do you think the ancestor revived him? Well, it was to be an alarm clock, of course. Why else? One family reunion coming right up. Okay, people, people, look alive. Let's go. Come on, get up. Let's move the grass and stand. you all way past the beauty sleep thing. So Mushu, the dragon, wakes up all the other dead people, one of whom has his head chopped off. Thanks to Mushu. Uh, thanks a lot. And no, we never find out how or why that happened. So the ancestors begin to argue amongst themselves who to send after Mulan and bring her back. And Mushu's like, hey, don't worry, guys. I got this. And uh, the head ancestor's like, nah, you're an alarm clock. Now go wake up the big ass dragon outside. So Mushu goes and yells at the big ass stone dragon who crumbles and gets completely destroyed by a yell. The hell kind of brittle stones y'all got in China. So anyway, Mushu's in some shit. And another damn bug runs up to him and says, Hey, you go get Milan. Stop sitting on your ass. And Mushu is like, damn, why did I think of that? So Mushu runs to catch up with Milan. And presumably several days later, Mulan is outside the army camp practicing as to how to be a man. Which isn't really that hard, but whatever. And then Mushu shows up. And Mushu is using literal smoke and shadows to imitate being bigger. <laughs> but it turns out that Mushu only paid a bug to do his visual effects for him. And he's not actually that big. So eventually, Mushu and Milan form a partnership in which Mushu will help Milan act like a man. Because, you know, always take advice from dragons, kids. And then there's this joke, which has aged like a fine red wine. For instance, my eyes can see straight through your armor. Ow! So Mushu tells Milan how to walk like a man, and Milan walks into the camp like she has a stick up her ass. And Milan keeps walking through the camp and... Wait, wait, back up a second. Did that man just cut his toenails with chopsticks? Yo, what this man doing in the war? Should be in a circus or something, because damn, that's impressive. So anyway, Milan bumps into a short dude, a lanky dude, and a big-ass mountain of a man. So Mushu's like, hey, punch that short dude in the back of the head. You made a friend. So Mushu's like, slap his ass. Whoa. Yo, uh, Mushu, uh, what the hell, man? But thankfully, the big ass mountain man is there to prevent a fight. And then the short guy tells Milan to piss off. Because I would too, to be honest. Who's out, who goes out here slapping dudes on the ass? I am worth my time, chicken boy. Chicken boy, say that to my face, you limp noodle. So obviously, a fight breaks out and eventually ends with Milan spilling everyone's cereal. And you don't mess with a man's cereal. So the entire camp decides to beat the crap out of Milan, which I totally understand. Meanwhile, this was happening. Tweezerface is sitting with the army general and the army general's son, Buff Boy. 
and they're discussing their battle plans, and Buff Boy is appointed leader of the civilian troops. They walk outside and see every man fighting, so the general's like, good luck, son, and rides away. So Buff Boy's like, hey, everybody, shut the hell up. What is going on here? And everybody's like, Milan spilt the cereal. So Buff Boy walks up to her and says, the hell is wrong with you? You know how hard it is to get milk out here? We don't even have cows. We only have horses. You know how hard it is to milk a horse? So Milan is like, hey, chill out. It's my fault. I'm sorry. My name is Ping, by the way. Like I said, Milan ain't that bright. So Buff Boy is like, fine, you can stay. But all of you better pick up all this cereal. And then everybody got mad and beat the crap out of Milan again. You know, we have to work on your people skills. So the next morning, Milan wakes up outside the camp with her tent being crappily made. Because she don't know how to do nothing. And then Mushu wakes her up with the bowl of porridge. It's got eyes and a smile and a damn bug in the middle of it. Yo, does China not have pesticide? Because these damn bugs are popping out like everywhere. So it turns out that Milan is late again. And there's a montage of Milan sucking at literally everything and getting into fights. Until she climbs a tree and suddenly she's good at everything. Then, after presumably weeks of training, Milan finally thinks it's time for her to have a bath. Damn, the girl must be musty. So, while she's bathing, the short guy, the lanky dude, and the mount man decide to join her. And she's like, damn, I got titties, and hides behind a rock. So, the short guy climbs on top of this rock and exposes himself in front of everybody. If you know what I mean. So Milan tries to get away from the other guy so that she won't get exposed. So Mushu, in an act of daring and cleverness, bites the lanky dude on the ass. Ouch! Something bit me! Ugh. Ugh. What a nasty flavor! Yo, uh, Mushu, you got, uh, you got anything you want to tell us? Well, regardless, it works, and Milan is like, naked dude's gross. And then like 50 more naked dudes just run by. Hey, don't look at me. I ain't biting no more butts. Right, so Buff Boy is talking to Tweezerface. And Buff Boy says, hey, I trained the army. They're ready to go fight. And Tweezerface is like, bro, they were spilling cereal like a month ago. They ain't ready for no war. So Mushu is out creeping. And overheard this conversation go down. And is like, hell no. We gon' fight this damn war. So he orders a bug to become a typewriter in order to forge a letter. Yeah, that sounds legit. So Mushu then somehow convinces a bear to let him ride on top and pretend to be a messenger. So Mushu rides over to Tweezerface, who screams like a girl. As would I, because, you know, it's a big-ass man riding a bear. You best believe it's serious. Anyway, Mushu hands Tweezerface the forged letter, which basically says, Hey, yo, come fight. So Milan and her squad are off to go to war. Meanwhile, the dude with the creepy eyes is out prowling and cutting down trees with his jagged ass sword. So he goes up to his homeboys and tells them that they're going to attack this one village. And his homeboys are like, why? And he's like, reasons. Which is a good enough reason for them. So off they go. So I'm guessing a couple days later. Milan and her homies are marching. And everybody's depressed. Because nobody likes to walk. So the lanky guy is like. Hey let's all sing about what kind of girls we're going to bang. After the war is over. So obviously the best song in the movie starts playing. Every guy sings about their type of girl. And when it comes to Milan, she's like, well, I don't know. How about a girl who's got a brain? Who always speaks her mind? Nah. You know, because she boring. So then an abrupt tone shift happens when they find a burnt down village. 
And next to the village, they find a battlefield filled with corpses of the Emperor's army. Among which, they find Buff Boy's dad. And so, they bury him and Buff Boy sticks his sword as a marker for his grave. Right, uh, moving on. The army continues marching, but suddenly, there's an explosion in the sky. Because Mushu was dicking around the explosives. And out of nowhere, the Huns pop out of the mountain and Milan's army spends all their e ammo immediately because uh, they're dumb. And then like 5,000 more Huns pop out the mountain and since Milan's army used all of their ammo, they're shit out of luck. So the Huns charged down the mountain and Milan's army got like, what, 200 dudes? So uh, they in a sticky situation. So it turns out that there's only one rocket left, so Milan grabs it and runs towards the Huns. So Milan seeing as how her friends are cornered and a massive army is headed their way, devises a plan of cunning and bravery. What is this plan, you might ask? Well, it's called Well Gunda. So obviously a huge ass avalanche erupts and everybody's dying, you know, except for the good guys. Milan manages to get to her dad's horse and battle against the avalanche and manages to rescue Buff Boy. Whilst this is happening, Mushu was out here snowboarding and manages to find another damn bug. Is you serious? In the, in the damn snow? <sighs> Anyway, Mushu finds Milan and then proceeds to do nothing. So Milan shoots an arrow with a rope tied to it at the short guy who catches it and is almost flung off the mountain until the big ass mountain man single handedly pulls up like 50 people, a horse and a damn dragon with a bug. What the hell do you even need an army for? Honestly, just send this one guy out and he'll probably win the entire war by himself. So they drag Milan up from the edge of the mountain and everybody's like, Yay, Milan saved us, even though she probably meant to kill us all. Yay. But then it turns out that Milan got stabbed. How she got stabbed, um, I don't know, the snow did it. So luckily, they had a doctor with them who treats Milan. Then he comes over to Buff Boy and is like, Hey, the man in there got titties. So Buff Boy's like, What? So he comes inside the tent and sees Milan. Then he turns to the doctor and says, Man, that's obviously a woman. The hell kind of doctor are you? Right, so it turns out that cross-dressing is punishable by death in China. And Tweezerface is way too excited to be killing Milan. Then Buff Boy steps in and spares Milan's life because she technically saved all their lives by accident. And Buff Boy says, I won't cut your head off, but you can't come with us. Okay, bye. And they leave. So Milan is left alone with her horse and Mushu. So everybody is sulking and they decide to head back home because there's nowhere else to go. Then suddenly, zombies. No, I'm serious. The Huns just pop out of the snow and we saw them die in the avalanche. So I ain't playing. I thought this was supposed to be a kid's movie, but y'all got zombies walking around. So I don't know. So Mushu sees this and is like, oh hell no, we're in a horror movie. We're all gonna die. So the Imperial Army is headed to the Emperor's castle and the zombies are following them and Milan decides to follow the zombies to help prevent a catastrophe. So everybody reaches the castle and the army is marching through the streets. Milan rides up to Buff Boy and is like, yo, we got Zomzoms. So obviously Buff Boy is like, she out her damn mind. So following the army is a gigantic Chinese dragon because, I don't know, people like dragons. So the emperor comes out of the castle to congratulate Buff Boy who gives it the emperor the jagged ass sword of the main bad guy. Then suddenly a bird swoops down and grabs the sword and carries it to the top of the castle and drops it onto a gargoyle who comes alive and grabs it. 
It turns out that the gargoyle was the dude with the creepy eyes. See, I told you something was up with him. It turns out that he was a zombie gargoyle all this time. Don't trust people with the yellow eyes, kids. At that same time, the dragon rips open and the rest of the zombies pop out, kidnap the emperor, and lock themselves inside the castle. What kind of crappy defenses does this guy have? He doesn't even have guards inside the palace? Worst emperor ever. So the army tries to buzz down the door to the castle with a statue, but Milan is like, hey guys, I have a better idea. And can you guess what Milan's brilliant idea is? It's cross-dressing. <sighs> you know, when I was younger, I didn't really notice how much cross-dressing actually happened in this movie. So anyway, Milan dresses up her three homies up as women and they infiltrate the castle. So the three dudes walk up to the rest of the zombies and proceed to kill them with fruit. Wait, wait, back up a second. Did that lanky guy just pull out a banana out of his bra? I have so many questions, but it's it's not the time. It's, it's just time to move on. We're gonna move past that. So the only guy left is the zombie gargoyle man with the creepy eyes. And while Milan's cross-dressing friends rescue the emperor, Milan and Buff Boy take on creepy eyes. So Buff Boy gets his ass kicked and Milan is the only one left to take on creepy eye. So Milan is like, oh hell no, and begins to run away and meets up with Mushu who's riding on a chicken? Whatever, moving past that. Creepy Eyes is chasing Milan and is cutting down whole columns with his crack crooked ass sword. The hell is that thing made out of? Well, anyway, they both end up on the roof and Milan pulls out a fan to fight a sword. She's insane, right? Well, Milan does some wushu magic and takes the sword from Creepy Eyes and then stabs him in his clothes and pins him to the roof. And then Mushu pops out of like nowhere with a big ass rocket on his back and he launches it at Creepy Eyes, who flies at a whole cache of fireworks and explodes in a blaze of glory. So all the zombies are dead and the emperor comes out of his castle and goes up to Milan and says, what the hell, Milan? You straight up burnt down like half my castle. But you did save us, so, you know, good job, I guess. Then the Emperor gives her the jagged ass sword and some bling and sends her on her way. Then the Emperor turns to Buff Boy and says, You gonna hit that? So Milan heads back home and finds her father chilling by a tree. And she walks up to him and says, Hey, daddy. I got you creepy dude sword and the emperor gave me some sweet bling. And then Milan and her father hug it out. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. But then Buff Boy shows up and is uh, and is like, "Hey, I'm here to bang Milan. She around?" And then Milan's grandma is like, "Damn. When the next war going to be?" Right. So Mushu is also hailed as a hero by the Dead People's Association. AKA the ancestors, cause he managed to bring back Milan with her head attached. So at the end, everybody is chilling, partying, and having a good time. Take it, Cookie. So obviously, if you've seen this movie as a kid, you love it, as I do. I just hope that the live action version doesn't screw it up. I rank this movie one lucky girl out of ten. Thank you for watching. Peace.